All right, we're starting off with um, a contrast media information, and then we'll follow up with venipuncture review. So you guys use contrast media all the time, um, but having to know some specifics for ART is important. So why do we use it? Well, there's some anatomical areas that we can't see without contrast, right? So we're gonna visualize certain anatomic structures that are not normally seen, um, they're generally um, split either negative or positive contrast. They're used to increase the atomic number of the tissues so we can see them um, and increase the subject contrast. The concept, it also relies on the photoelectric um, effect. So the x-ray photon being totally absorbed and not striking the image receptor. There's three ways for the contrast media to enter the body orally, rectally, or injected into blood vessels, so your vein or so that you can drink it, you'll inject it um, through the rectum or an IV. Positive and negative contrast. So positive contrast has higher atomic number elements. It's radiopaque. So your barium sulfate or your water-soluble contrast. Those are gonna be your positive contrast where your negative contrast is gonna be air or um, the CO2, it's radiolucent. Um, you guys know when you do a double contrast EE, you use this blue pump and you're gonna pump air into um, the colon. So that would be your negative contrast. Air and gases, so negative contrast agents, so your double BE or your double contrast GI where you have the patient drink down those fizzies or effervescent granules, whatever you wanna call them. And then they drink the thick barium and it enlarges the stomach a bit, brings some air into the stomach, and the thick barium is then gonna count, um, sorry, count, uh, coat the outer lining. It could be a double contrast arthrogram or um, things like that would use the negative contrast agents in addition to um, the positive contrast agents. Barium sulfate, which we use all the time. Barium sulfate is positive, it's radiopaque, it's chalk-like, it absorbs most x-rays. It's specified as a colloidal suspension and it never dissolves in water. The reaction to barium is extremely unlikely. It's um, very inert. Uh, here's the abbreviation for it. An atomic number is 56. Um, if you've met Dave, he's probably asked you that question. It's the most common contrast media that's taken orally, right? really the most inert and least likely to cause a problem. It can be used um, rectally. It could be in a powder, liquid, paste, tablet. Um, it should never be used if there's a question of perforation. Viscosity is a term essentially used for thickness. So we have thick barium versus thin barium and the ratios are just different. Um, so thick barium is either three to one ratio or four to one ratio of barium to water where thin barium is one-to-one. -one. And you know if you've mixed either of these, one is a lot heavier than the other and easier for your patient to get down. Uh, the elimination of barium, if you've done an upper GI or BE, you probably told your patient, hey, you need to drink a lot of fluids the next 24 to 48 hours. Why? Because if they don't drink any fluids, they'll possibly have constipation or dehydration because that barium might bind them up. So. It's eliminated through bowel movements. Their stool may be a white or a gray color, but most of the time out in 24 hours. Iodinated contrast. Um, so if you ever have an exam that's questioning a perforation, you should use iodinated contrast. Just follow the protocol, whatever the department's using um, for that or a radiologist preference, you're gonna use that type of contrast for that exam. Um, so if it says question perforation, you're going to use water soluble and not barium. The contraindication is that it can cause a reaction. Um, if the patient has a hypersensitivity to iodine or has a previous reaction, they may need to have a different contrast or be premedicated before that exam. The elimination of iodinated, iodinated contrast, sorry, I'm tripping over my words. Um, it's water-based, so the body can absorb it and eliminate it through urine, and majority is eliminated within 24 hours. There are two main types, so ionic and non-ionic. Ionic, 
dissociates into two ions, so like anion and cation. Non-ionics don't. Um, the non-ionics have lower osmolarity. They're less toxic, less likely to cause a patient reaction. They're more tol tolerable to patients, but they also cost more. Um, so the ionic contrast is associated with high rates of adverse effects and fell out of favor in the 1990s. Ideally, they're not being used as much. Viscosity and osmolality, <laughs> sorry gang, osmolality, I trip over that word every time. Um, so one is the concentration of iodine particles in the solution. If it's high, it has a higher concentration of particles than blood. And when that happens, there's a higher risk of reaction. Viscosity, on the other hand, is the thickness or like stickiness of the suspension. So how well can it flow through a needle? If it's used for injection, obviously higher viscous solutions are harder to inject. Um, say like maple syrup is way thicker than something else, right? Thick fluids are easier to inject when warmed. Um, if there's a greater concentration of iodine, you also more high viscosity. Volume versus speed. So the volume at which, um, the volume that needs to be injected at what speed uh, can also have, uh, be taken into account for reactions. But increasing the volume of the injected contrast can increase adverse reactions, increasing the speed or rate can also um, make that occur. Most of our injections in diagnostic radiology are hand injected. In CT, they use something called a power injector where they load this equipment and then it is injected through there so they don't um, control it by hand, which is why also the um, amount and speed at which these, this contrast is injected results in probably higher occurrences of adverse reactions in CT versus regular x-ray.